Howdy folks, Singin' Toad here, and uh, you know, how are y'all doing this evening? I'm doing quite well. Um, you know, I just wanted to take a quick moment to uh, get something out of the way, and that is I just wanted to apologize for uh, the videos on my channel kind of slowing down. Um, I was trying to maintain two videos per week uh, or more, and I'm just finding that way too difficult to do. And uh, as of right now, I'm kind of at an impasse in my life with uh, personal life, work, family life, my numerous hobbies that I'm into. Uh, believe it or not, knife collecting is only one of many hobbies of mine. Uh, and trying to do all of that, plus, you know, film videos and edit those videos and produce good quality content, or at least to the best of my abilities for you guys, is proving to be quite tasking. So if the content slows down a little bit, you know, going forward, that's what's happening. I haven't fallen off the face of the planet. I'm still here. I'm still making content. I'm just taking a little bit of a break, if, if we can call it a break, or a longer break in between videos to just do other things, okay? Uh, and I appreciate your patience on that. So without uh, any further ado, let's get into today's video. So what are we talking about? Um, today's video is going to be uh, the recent changes I made to the knives that I carry in my car emergency slash, you know, preparedness slash get home bag. Um, now I'm not really into the whole bug out bag thing, but um, I do work in another city and live in another city, and therefore I commute uh, by, by my car. And in the winter time here in Canada, you know, we have winter, <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, and no, it's not 11 months of the year. Um, it, it's only it's only about uh, 10 and a half. Uh, that's a joke. Uh, but, uh, you know, in the wintertime, it can get a little bit dodgy. And there have been times when I've actually had to uh, stop and pull over. And I had to wait uh, quite some time before I could get going again because of just how bad the, the snowstorm was. So the, the possibility of me uh, being in a situation where I might be stranded in my car or I may have to abandon my car and be on foot and travel, uh, that is kind of the purpose of my bag. It's not really to bug out, it's just more like I need to get home. And I do carry some things in that bag, um, which is just a backpack really, um, you know, for that thing, for that purpose. Um, now, I might do a video where I go through the entire contents of, of that uh, bag, uh, but today I'm just going to focus on the knives and a couple other things. So. First things first, we're going to talk about the knives I used to have in it. So the first knife that I used to have in it is this guy right here. This is the Mora Companion. And this guy right here, which uh, that doesn't show you very much, does it? <laughs> Excuse me. So this here is uh, the Victor Victorinox um, Trekker, one-handed opening Trekker. And these are the two knives that I carried in that bag. I'm just going to go ahead and get this guy out, just so you all can see the blade there. So this was the fixed blade that I carried. Now this is the HD model in carbon steel, and of course this is the one-handed uh, Trekker, and this has the plain uh, edge, okay, which is very, very dull by my standards. I need to touch that up. But um, at any rate, these were the two knives that I carried in my car. Uh, in, in my uh, emergency preparedness slash get home bag. And I've gone ahead and changed these out. So what I've replaced them with, so for the fixed blade, I have upgraded to the Mora Consbol. And for the uh, Swiss Army knife, I'm still sticking with Swiss Army knife, I have the Victorinox uh, Fieldmaster. Uh, now, in a previous video, I did mention that I bought this for, you know, for EDC carry, um, but I've just actually been finding that this guy here is a little bit too bulky, and what I carry more, let's pull him out of the pocket right now, is this guy. This is my Super Tinker. So this is a three-layer uh, Swiss Army knife, uh, and this, of course, is a four-layer. Now, this guy does have the saw, and this, uh, the Fieldmaster here, is identical to the uh, Super Tinker has all the exact same tools, it just has the saw in addition. And that's not really a tool that I use all that often when I'm around town and stuff like that. So, plus I'm usually never far away from my Leatherman or my Victorinox um, Spirit X which have saws in them. So this wasn't um, such a smart choice for a pocket carry, 
Um, and because of how thick he is, he's a little bulky. And I really don't like a lot of bulk in the pocket. Um, especially now, now we're moving into the summer months where it's getting warmer and I'm, you know, I'm dressing down and wearing shorts and t-shirt weather. Having a bulky thing in my pocket is just not kosher with me. Uh, but hey, if that's what you're into, you know, I know people who carry, you know, like a buck 110 classic in their pocket. Um, you know, they don't mind carrying half a pound piece of bronze, uh, brass and steel <laughs> in their pocket. But uh, for me, this is just a little bit too thick. So I tend to find I'm just carrying this guy more often. So anyway, I just decided that this would be better off uh, in the... Uh, in the in the get home bag um, because it's just more capable it just has more tools uh, than this guy does now this isn't a bad uh, knife but it's only got a single blade this has two blades um, of course this guy has a saw but this has saw this has scissors you know this has the uh, the all-purpose hook which is good for lifting a pot off a, off, off a fire you know just has more capabilities so I decided to retire this guy and switch him out for this guy and still in the cool camel print. Now now as for the knife as I mentioned I originally had uh, this guy here the Mora Companion um, HD Carbon and I upgraded it to the uh, Mora uh, Consbol or Cansbol. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, so anyway the main reason why I switched these out is this, again, is just more capabilities. It's more around uh, the camp better. This guy is thicker. He's made of carbon steel. And I know for those people who are in the carbon steel camp, they're going to not like my decision here. But where I live, I have to deal with a thing called humidity. And we're moving into those, those months. We're moving into summer. Humidity is a big problem. Carbon steel and humidity do not get along. And this being left in my car for you know, hours and days and weeks, you know, months. I don't want rust to form on this. And even if a tiny bit of micro rust forms on the edge, it'll dull this knife up <clears throat> and make this knife less usable. The other point is I'm a big time believer and supporter of your knife should take care of you, not you take care of your knife, especially in a time of need. Okay. It's different if I'm going into the wilderness and I'm bringing a carbon steel knife with me. I'm going to bring things like oils and cleaning rags and things to take care of this with me. When I'm depending on this because my car broke down or something happened where I had to abandon my car, I don't want it where I'm going to pull it out and have to use it and it's dull. Okay, I don't want that. Okay, I don't want to have to constantly have to remind myself to check this and oil the blade and deal with all that nonsense. So I got rid of this guy and went with the stainless cons bowl because of course it's in the stainless steel but this one also has this uh this multi-grind uh blade which just makes it better for all around purposes so you know if i had to you know uh, uh prepare a uh an animal uh hypothetical situation i don't know why i'd be doing that but let's just say it really happens and, and uh, things get really bad and i have to catch an animal and prepare it this would be better for preparing the game it still is good for, for fire prep and, and wood prep and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it also has a wicked 90 degree edge on the spine, which, by the way, the, the, the companion models do not come like that. Now, I did grind this one uh, with a file to make it a 90 degree edge spine, rather, but their, their spines on these actually come rounded. Uh, we're out of the box where this guy comes, you know, truly uh, 90 degrees. So just for my needs, this here is the better option and this here is the better option for the two knives in my uh you know car bag <laughs> whatever we want to call it i don't have a real fancy name for it i'm just going to use the term get home bag maybe we'll call it like an action pack or something i don't know maybe you guys have an idea for a cool name for my bag <laughs> do you guys carry a bug out bag or action bag or get home bag or whatever you want to call it you know let me know down in the comments and if you do what do you call yours um but anyway there is a few other things that I carry in that uh, bag, and I just want to go over that real quick. So the other thing that I carry is this guy right here. This is uh, the uh, what is this? The work sharp, I think. I think it's the work sharp. Yeah, work sharp. There it says right there. Um, field sharpener, and this guy has you know two diamond plates. One is a fine, one is a coarse. It has a piece of leather, which I have treated with green compound. 
It has ceramic rods. Uh, it has a, another little ceramic rod up here. This dial rotates around and you can go from a coarse to a fine to a fish hook sharpener. And I just carry this as well because this is just super handy for doing field sharpening. Now you might say, wait, wait a sec. Didn't you just talk about, well, you don't want to have to sharpen your knife. Can you, that's why you got rid of this. Yes, hold on though. The difference is this is to put an edge back on my knife in the event I damaged it while out doing something, okay? I don't want to start by having to sharpen my knife. I don't want to start that way, okay? This is after I've used the knife, so I've been using this knife and it's starting, the edge is starting to dull up. You know, then I can come in here and I can, you know, put an edge back on, I can strop it, you know, so on and so forth. And just, this is a knife maintenance tool, not a, this thing's dull to start with and I need to get it sharp. No, that's, that's, that's not, not, uh, not kosher with me. Okay. So <laughs> just going to, uh, battle that comment before that one shows up. All right. Uh, so the next thing here is, um, this guy, which is my fire starting kit. So this is a, um, I don't even know where I got this container from, but uh, it's got a, a watertight uh, seal on the inside. So, uh, but if I just pop this guy open, what I do carry in the contents here, I'm just going to take them out here, is I carry a ferrocium rod, which I mentioned, this having a 90 degree spine, you know, I can easily use this to throw sparks. Now it does come with a striker, but the striker sucks. Um, and it does have a whistle, which is also terrible. It is functional, but it, it, I mean, I wouldn't want to rely on this, but I guess if it's better than screaming and yelling, I could use a whistle. But, uh, but anyway, so I got this little, uh, and I think this is a light my fire brand, which I think is out of Sweden. Or is it Switzerland? Yeah, Sweden. It's, and this is made in Sweden. So, Hey, these two things are made in Sweden. Check that out. But anyway, um, yeah, so 90 degree spine, ferrocium rod. Makes all the sense, doesn't it? I'm just going to go ahead and stick you up there. Uh, we also have uh, a mirror. So this is more just a signaling mirror, but uh, you can use a mirror to, to start a fire. I also have a little miniature Bic lighter. You know, Bic, can't go wrong with that. Lights first time, every time. I also have... A little box of matches. These are pretty much, I think they're like a strike anywhere match. Does it say? No, it doesn't say that anywhere on it, but they basically are a strike anywhere match. It does come with a striker on the side, anywho. So a little pack of matches. And if I can get this junk out of here. Way down in the bottom, I keep some uh, really super dry uh, jute twine. So I have some fire starter material. I have different things to start a fire with. I can use this double purpose as a, as a signaling uh, a device uh, as well as a fire starter. You know, I have all these methods. Uh, the only thing I'm missing is a magnifying glass. Um, you know, I do want to add that to, to the kit eventually, but this is just some of the things that I carry. And uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and throw this guy back in the, uh, in the picture here. So anyway, these are the knives that I carry in my, uh, you know, in my, in my get home bag. Uh, in my car and uh, these are just some of the fire starting things so again maybe I'll do a video in the future where I go in further detail of everything that's in the bag um, but uh, that's really all I had for you today uh, I just want to start the conversation please folks the comment section is open get down there I'd love to hear what do you guys carry in your uh, emergency kit in the car I'm looking forward to reading those comments and uh, and chat with you guys anyway I hope you guys have a great Rest of your day. This is Singing Toad, signing out.